Alright dudes, how's it going? And welcome to Over the Gun TV's How to Configure Fraps. Now, unlike Hypercam, there's not an awful lot to configure and change in Fraps. Nothing that's really going to make or break your recording. And I'm going to be missing out the general, the FPS, and the screenshot tabs. Every option contained within those three tabs is either self-explanatory or down to preference, and you don't need me to go through those with you. Now, the first thing you're going to see in the Movies tab is where you're saving the footage to. Make sure it's a fast drive, but primarily make sure that you've got a lot of room on that drive. Fraps is notorious for eating a lot of drive space, you're going to go through at least a gig a minute, if not more. It will vary depending on what resolution and what frames per second you're recording at. And I would recommend that you do test records before you begin to get a rough idea of how many minutes per gig you're going to be getting. You can change the video capture key to whatever you want, any single key. You can also use alt based combinations to change it as well. You can disable the video capture key, but it's not particularly useful. Now the main setting in this um, tab is the half size and the full size options. If you are playing a game at 1024x768 resolution and you had the full size option enabled, then your outputted footage would be identical to that resolution. It would be 1024x768 footage. If you had the half size option enabled and you are playing a game at 1024x768, then your outputted footage would be 640x480. Half size obviously yields lesser quality video, but at the same time it won't be as demanding on your PC. If you're struggling to use Fraps to record, I recommend putting it on a half size. But like I say, do bear in mind that your recorded video will be a lower resolution and when you come to render it in a um, video editing program, you may be stretching it to a higher resolution than what you're recording it in and um, it probably won't work that well with HD. The other option to change in here is the frames per second options, which are the same deal as Hypercam. The higher the frames per second, the smoother the footage. The lower the frames per second, the jerkier the footage. I'd recommend a solid 30 frames per second. It's a good frames per second, there's no real need to go lower than 30 frames per second. Feel free to go higher than 30 frames per second, however, especially in first person games. It's very noticeable in first person games whether you've got 60 frames per second or not but I wouldn't recommend going any higher than 60 frames per second, there's not much need. The only time you'd want to go higher than 60 frames per second is if you were doing slow motion effects in a video montage, for instance. And the higher the frames per second, the smoother the slowdown will be for when you're slowing and speeding up footage, etc. So I'd recommend a frames per second between 30 and 60. The higher the frames per second, the more demanding on your PC it's going to be and the more drive space it's going to take. So do bear that in mind, and like I say, I would recommend a solid 30 frames per second for most normal uses, unless you really want that extra smoothing effect, or you've got a powerful enough PC to handle a higher frames per second. Make sure record sound is checked if you wish to record sound. Refer to the how to record game audio and your voice simultaneously video for a bit more options on setting up your sound to record what you want. Keep detect best sound input and you're gonna that'll do you fine ninety nine percent of the time. If for some reason it's not doing the right one, use the Windows sound input. But detect best sound input will probably be fine for you the majority of the time. Sound device should be the correct sound card that you're using to output your sound. And the sound input, if you're like I said before, refer to the other video for a bit more information on the um, sound recording. But in a nutshell, if you're just rec wanting to record the game or the video audio, make sure it's set to wave. If you're wishing to just record your voice, or say have the speakers going into the microphone alongside your voice, make sure it's set on microphone. And if you're wishing to record both your microphone and the game audio, then make sure it's set to stereo mix or what you hear. They're both the exact same option, just named something different. The last option in this Movies tab is the No Cursor and No Sync options. Now I would recommend that you never check No Sync. Don't check no sync unless you know exactly the reason that you're doing it. I'm not going to go through why you'd want to do uh, no sync, but uh, like I say, I'd recommend 99% of the time do not have no sync checked. No cursor is entirely down to preference and down to what game you're recording, and it will do exactly as it says on the tin. It will remove the mouse cursor from being recorded. It will not remove crosshairs from being recorded in first person games, for instance, however. It will just remove a normal mouse cursor and stuff like real-time strategy games and online RPGs. So guys, I hope you found that useful and I'll catch you next time. See ya dudes!